Now our Silverado is quick as lightning. Unfortunately, the drum brakes are a little slow to respond. Today on Tech Garage, we'll upgrade from drums to discs. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Well, last season we tricked out our supercharged truck from the front all the way to the rear. But you know, after driving it for a while, I saw one thing that was missing. I sure would like to have disc brakes back here instead of these drums. But you know, Brian, that year they didn't even offer disc brakes. No, and you know what? This is a project a lot more guys are tackling these days, the old-fashioned conversion. And there's a reason why. There's so much better stopping power and braking power at the corner of every vehicle when you've got four-wheel disc and rotor combos. You think about when you're stepping over rocks off the road and maybe you have one wheel up, one wheel loose, and the other three are doing all the heavy lifting. You're really thankful you have this type of combination in that regard. Now our drum brakes back there, you got these fins right here. We're not dissipating any heat. Also, if you look inside of this thing, yeah, they're leading trail and they're gonna stop, but they're not gonna do near the clamping force that these disc brakes are gonna do. And also, man, the, also the ventilation right here, that's gonna dissipate the heat. That's gonna do a much better job. Yep. But most important to me, Brian, I wanna look through those dub rims and I wanna see a good looking high performance caliper. It is gonna look great, John, but you know, here at Tech Garage, we are all about that performance and that's exactly what we're gonna gain. This job isn't all that hard, but you gotta have the right tools, you got to have the right know-how, you got to be patient, and you got to have the right parts. I think we have all that lined up, so I'm going to jump in. Yeah, well, we had a couple options. I mean, we could have did a disc brake conversion, a whole kit, but you know, Advanced Salvage hooked us up with a whole differential. It's a Tahoe differential, so there's some differences, but we're going to make it happen. I'm going to go over there and peel some parts off while you start on this one. I'm going to jump in. So there's a couple things here that we need to be considered of. Some parts, some of the removal process. Ultimately, we're going to open up the differential cover. Then we're gonna pull both axles, then remove the axle shafts. Ultimately, we're gonna lose these backing plates and replace them with caliper mounting brackets. Not terribly hard to do. And of course, while we're in there, we're gonna replace all the bearings, outer axle bearings. Again, right tool matters a lot in that particular job. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get a few differential bolts out, get my drain pan in here, get this underway, and John's gonna tell you how this whole assembly is actually gonna work. While Brian's ready to get his axles out, let's take a look at our donor differential, that advanced salvage scent. Now this one's from a Tahoe, same year make and model, but see it's coil spring suspension. So you got some different bracketry here for the coil springs along with the shock absorbers. But I went ahead and took our axles out already because what we're gonna be using is actually these covers right here, and that's what we need. The whole clip right here that's gonna house the disc brakes and get rid of our drum brakes. So we'll take that off in a minute. But before we get to that, let's understand how a differential works. Well, what it does, it's actually transferring the power 90 degrees down to the wheels. And there's a couple components inside of here. You can see this whole carrier assembly. Now this carrier assembly houses the ring gear and the ring gear is located right here. And then coming in from the drive shaft, is bolted to what's called the pinion gear. Now the pinion gear contacts the ring gear and that's what turns it. Now you heard a 373, 411, 456 gear ratios. That's determined by the number of teeth on the ring and pinion. The smaller the gear ratio, the higher the faster you're gonna go or the slower you're gonna go, depending on the differential setup. Now it's real important, I wanna share a tip with you. These bearings inside of here, they get a lot of wear and abuse, so that's why it's so important to make sure that you change the fluid. The bearings are turning, you got a crush collar right here, and everything in there has to move. It's metal to metal contact, and the only thing that's actually lubricating it is the fluid in the differential. Now one other thing I wanna show you, I actually wanna pull this pin out here that keeps the axles in, I'm gonna slide that out. And you've probably heard of spider gears and side gears. Well, I can spin them around here and take them out. These are the actual spider gears that go around, and then you have the side gears right here. And what that does, it allows the axles to turn at different speeds when you're turning. If you didn't have those, you'd have some wheel hop or, or a bounce as you're going around a turn, and you don't want that. Now, that's a good look of how a differential works. Brian's working on his. Let's check in and see how far he's gotten. Diff covers off, the fluid's out, we've got the pinion shaft out. There's only one retaining bolt holding that in place, and I gotta be honest, sometimes you spend some quality time beating and banging to get these out, but this actually came out pretty fluidly, so I'm happy about that. The next step is, is to get these axle retaining clips both removed. Now, on the Silverado, we've got an Eaton locker rear end. What that means is, to get the axle compressed, you may have to take your left hand and work that locker, 
your right hand and work the axle shaft to get it positioned so the axles can squeeze in so you can get those rotating clips off. And of course, this is a very expensive tool to harvest those clips. It's a magnet. So I think I've got this clip right where we need it. I'm going to come up in here, pull it. There's your clip. Looks just like a horseshoe. Take care of these. You're going to need these on the reassemble. OK, so this axle's free. I'm going to come over, give it a yank, pull it right out, support it on the way. Axle number one out, one to go. Backing plates are coming off during the break. Stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by AirTex. Exceptional quality, unmatched support. Dustless blasting. It's the future of surface preparation. Evapo Rust. Super safe rust remover. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Did anybody ever tell you to use the right tool for the job? Well, it might have been my grandfather speaking, but I'm going to tell you what, that's critical in a job like this today. So we've got to harvest this outer seal and the bearing out of the end of this axle. And to do that, we're going to use the right tool for the job, a bearing puller. Now, if you don't own one of these, go down to Advance and you get it as part of their lunar tool program. I promise you it's going to save you time and a lot of heartache. Shamefully, I've been this guy, and I've left a lot of tracks and damage behind in trying to do that. You don't need to do that. So once we get those removed, and I'll tell you what, I've got a little rag right here to cover that brake line that was going into the wheel cylinder just to prevent any damage or dirt as it flies. We're going to replace the bearing, as I mentioned. We've got a top quality one from CarQuest. We've got a seal, and most importantly, we've got the right tools to reinstall those. That's going to make this much easier. So let me get cracking on this bearing. The puller goes in. And this is going to stand up and square up behind that bearing. That's what's actually going to do the work once we start hitting it with the hammer. We go in, we turn it. Now I'm going to run this nut down and get that relationship tight and secure. And that's going to allow me to get some pretty substantial slide action here. And with any luck, we'll get this to come out in a few swings. You can see it's moving. Imagine if that was a screwdriver and a ball peen the old-fashioned way. This makes it much easier. All right, I think we're close. There we go. There it is. All right, I'm going to get this new bearing in place. I'm going to get this new seal in place. And John's going to show you just how this disc brake assembly is going to work. Well, we got our donor backing plate off that's going to house our disc brake system. Brian's going to use this in a minute, but let's look at the disc brake components that's actually going to build the system. We'll start right here with our actual rotor, CarQuest Platinum Rotor. And this one's really special because it's painted. I told you earlier, I want to look through those dub rims and I want to see a nice disc brake system. This is going to do just that. It's painted on the top hat here along with the side. Now you can look inside here, it's actually going to house the emergency brakes. The disc brake uses emergency brakes, little shoes over here that's going to go in there and the coefficient of friction on this rotor man it's going to do great stopping now we're also going to use the wherever professional platinum pads those are nice because they have the shims on the back comes with all the hardware you need even the grease for the slide so you make sure the calipers are moving back and forth we're going to put a new hose on there that's going to mate up with the actual drum brake hose so we can get fluid back there and then we're going to come over to our caliper assembly now we had a couple options here we could have bought the bracket and the caliper separate but we chose to order the whole thing because we're going to need it all. The mounting housing here and the caliper itself. You can see the disc, the pads are going to ride in there and what that's going to do, it's actually going to strap right on here to the back and plate, go over to our rotor and we're going to have a disc brake system. Let's check in with Brian and see how he's coming along. He's going to need this back and plate here in a minute. All right, a little TLC to get it seated with the right tool. There's the new seal, there's the new bearing. That's a great shape. We didn't have to pre-pack that with any grease because the differential fluid's gonna do all that job. Hey John, we're ready for the backing plate, buddy. I got it right here and all the components that go along with it. Awesome, yeah, emergency brake, it. Look at that. cable bracket down. I tell you what, it's so nice that we're going Chevy to Chevy here. And that's the whole point. I mean, it's gonna bolt right up just like it was. It's the same differential, just a different backing plate configuration. Love it. You wanna get that axle, I'll knock this on. Tighten that up. 
Make sure that's secure. Well Time done. Here comes the axle. axle. Go nice and level. I don't want to put any undue pressure on those rollers. Slide it in level. Support it the whole way. It's always a good idea to replace that bearing, even if your seal's leaking, because you know what happens, that axle starts flopping up and down, and when it does that, it beats on that seal, and that's why it's leaking. It's not so much the actual bearing itself. And, okay, she's set. Looks like we're ready for the rotor. Awesome. Let's slip that on. That's gonna go right over those shoes back there. Look at that, it looks like it belongs on oh, there. Oh, it sure does. Amazing. Let's see if I can get this caliper mounting bracket at least hung here with one bolt. And I love this. The bolt comes uh, actually pre-lubed here with the uh, anti-seize or the lock-in on here so we can lock that thing in there. Very nice. Yep. And then all we need to do then is put the caliper on, bleed yeah. it. I need to get that retainer clip back on the end of the axle shaft. Yeah, and you know what? I got a little prize for you. Here's an actual chrome cover. The guys yeah. our age, we appreciate this, yeah. man. We'll button it up with that. You know what? We're going to take this thing on a test drive. You take a break. We'll be back. You'll see what happens with the brakes and how great they work, along with the RSX Resurrection Project when we return with more Tech Garage right after this. I'll tell you what, no squeak, squeals, or rattles, or bangs. It all seems pretty good on this conversion. But, and I know it looks good, you can see that, but let's see if it actually stops any better. Wow, fuller pedal, definitely shorter stopping distance, and we've got these platinum pads that let us do anything we want to do. So I'm pretty happy with the project. I'll tell you what, we're not far from the shop, so I'm going to head back and see. I think John's got the Acura on the lift. Let's see what he's got going on. Well, we got our project, RSX Resurrection, in the shop, up on the lift, and we had to do some rear brake investigating. Why? Well, last week we put that clutch in it. We took it out for a test drive, and with some aggressive driving, we got those front tires smoking, man. The clutch is working good. Problem, got back to the shop, had a little smoke coming out of the rear wheels. Front wheel drive car, not good but actually very common, and let me show you why. This car has a integral parking brake in the disc brake system. Well, what is all that about? Well, check it out down here. Here's a normal caliper right here, and you can actually see it. Fluid goes right behind this piston, it pushes it over, the square cut seal pulls it back. Now, you're probably familiar with either pushing it back with a tool like this, or actually a C-clamp. All of us have done this before. You just push it back in its bore, the fluid goes back, and it's fine. Well, on this RSX, and a lot of cars with integral parking brakes, not the case. You can see it right here. What do I mean by integral parking brake? Well, you can see the mechanism right here. So what happens when you hit the parking brake, you're actually moving this little screw and nut lever in here. It can be a ball or nut or a screw and nut here. This one actually has a little screw. And if you look down inside of there, you can actually see the screw. Well, that's a big problem if you try to push it back. So if you use a C-clamp or actually one of these tools to shove that back in there without twisting it, it's going to stick every time you're ruining the caliper. Well, what do we do? Real simple. Go get your tool set like this. And what this does, it actually goes together and this is going to twist and push at the same time. You can see the little notches on the caliper assembly itself. I'm gonna put this down and I'll show you little notches right here. That's another indication that you know you have an integral parking brake in there because they give you the notches to wind it back. So if I put that down like this and I just tighten this up here, I'm going to hold constant pressure on the piston, but I'm not going to retract it. How I'm going to retract it is I'm actually going to spin it. And when I spin it, you can see it moving back in its bore. Keep pressure on it, spin, keep pressure on it, spin, and it's going back real nice. Guess what? No problem. Your fluid's going to push it, your e-brake's going to come out, you're not going to have the smoking on the actual rear of the car like we had. Now, I've been guilty of this before. If you don't have the tool and you're in a tight, you can take some needle nose pliers and try to spin it back in, but the key is make sure you're spinning it in there and not pushing it in with a C-clamp. Now, Brian's going to go ahead and replace the whole caliper assembly. We're also going to do a hose. I know Brian is probably going to do some autocross driving, but let me give you one more tip before we check in with him. Hoses have to hold a lot of pressure, up to 4,000 PSI, and a lot of times they're double line hoses. You can see this one on the inside here. It's actually got some fraying and some blown out there. It could have been collapsed and you might not even see it. Here's a good trick for you. Got an actual assembly right here and my rotor. So if you go to the rear or the front of the car for that matter and you're pulling on the rotor and it's not moving, 
it's frozen, just simply come over and open up your bleeder. If you open up your bleeder screw and your rotor then spins free, then you know the hose was collapsed. Why? Well, the piston retract, the fluid came out, and it spun. If you open up the bleeder and it's still frozen, you probably need a caliper. RSX, I'm sure Brian wants to do both of them with his aggressive driving style. Let's check in with him and see how he's progressing. What is this aggressive driving style John's talking about? All right, it's possible there's some truth to that. The way we got this rear smoking to begin with was on the test drive, we were doing a little e-braking to see where we were. We've got a problem. So I did the exact same diagnostic. I cracked the bleeder valve on this old caliper. It didn't move. Clearly time for a replacement. Now you'll remember we upgraded the rotors and the pads previously, but it's time for all new hardware back here. What we're doing is buying ourselves some insurance no matter what type of driving we're doing. So we're gonna replace the brake hose, new caliper, new caliper mounting bracket is already in place. Not hard to do, but you gotta have the right tool for the job. So here's the new caliper with the new brake hose pre-connected. You can see the new seals. This is torque to spec. I've got the bleeder valve shut, so I'm not gonna drip out any fluid once I make the connection. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this hose right through here and get it close. I'm gonna hang this caliper right here and even get a bolt or two in so that it's steady and in place. Of course, that caliper piston's retracted with the right tool just like John showed us. Now this isn't gonna move on us when we make the connection up at that brake line, because frankly, I want that transition to go pretty quickly. There we go. Okay. And if you've ever pulled one of these rusty retaining clips, you've either punched yourself in the nose or maybe busted a knuckle. Chief Tech Chase has the right tool for the job. Come up here and pull. There's the old retaining clip off. Make sure you use a tubing wrench for this coupling. Disconnect. Come up. Crack it loose. Again, I've got this end of the new hose down here out of harm and dirt's way. Okay. Out with the old, up in with the new. I saw two drops come out, but that's not gonna kill us on the re-bleed. And get this button back up. Again, you wanna make sure that bleeder valve is closed, which we did. Okay, seated. So let's get this old caliper out of here. There's the shop's best friend, the bungee. Get this out of the way. Okay, let's come on down. There's one bracket bolt here on this new brake hose. We're gonna get it in place to hold it and secure it. Then down here at the e-brake connection, it's real simple. So this tab comes up over and hooks in, which I like to pre-connect here. And then we'll come back and add, there we go, it sits down over. We'll add the two bolts into the bottom of the bracket, which go right here, very simple to do. So stay with us, we'll button this up. We got more to come on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Blaster. Work it like a pro. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. And by Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back on the road. back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Our performance playbook's all about the differential, but picture this first. We're here at Bernie's with this A-Fuel dragster. That differential has to transfer the power to this tire and then get it to the road. Look at the size of the tread on this thing. And when this thing hooks up, there's gonna be some massive stress and some massive force on this differential, hence this big old differential. Josh, tell us about your A-Fuel dragster and the differential. How's this thing work? So back to the clutches that we spoke about. It actually transfers the pressure gradually through the drive shaft to the pinion gear and begins to spin the differential, transporting all of the power to the axles. Now, you also monitor drive shaft vibrations, I know with this much force. Yes, sir, it's a 290 gear ratio, so it takes a lot of power just to turn the wheels. You got a massive pinion, a massive ring gear. We saw one earlier. Let's check out what Drew's working on. Remember earlier we did a drum disc conversion on our Silverado? Well, he's doing some upgrades right now. Uh, this is our 41 Ford, originally came in as a straight axle drum brake truck. 
We upgraded it, pulled the straight axle out, and put the Mustang 2 front end under it. Entails new cross member, upper and lower A arms, spring, internal shock. Gives a lot better ride, handling's a lot better. Go from installing the spindle, and we go down to our local advanced auto parts and get our rotor. We get our caliper, get all our bearings, our cap, everything to finish our Mustang 2 front end. You can utilize anything from the Mustang that is an upgrade. You can put the slotted rotors on, you can put the other calipers, the more pistons, you can go with the better brakes. The sky's the limits with the Mustang too. That's the lowdown from Bernie's. Now it's time for the email question of the week. John Jody from Roanoke, Virginia emailed us this week with a 2009 Dodge Ram 1500 four-wheel drive that's pulling to the right but only under braking. Said she looked at the pads through the wheel. They looked pretty good, but that thing's pulling to the right just during braking. The key word there, during braking. You know, we talked about alignment. That's probably not the issue. Because you're braking, it has something to do with either the suspension components moving or the brake system itself. I can give you some tips, Jody, that deal with just the brake system. First of all, you got to make sure those slides are moving back and forth. We addressed that plenty of times before. If one's hanging up a little bit, it's going to pull to that side. You saw the real caliper today. The rear caliper hangs up. It's going to pull once again. And important, coefficient of friction that surface between the pads and the rotors. Yep. You get two, we got slotted here, we got regular, it's obviously gonna pull to the higher coefficient of friction. So you gotta make sure the rotors are good and equal and they're in good shape also. Your pads, you got any contamination on a pad? Brian, a lot of people think I get oil on there, it's gonna slip, it's actually gonna grab. Yep. It's gonna pull to that side. And then the hoses was concerned, showed you how to diagnose that, that's gonna cause a pull as well. And if it's a four wheel drive vehicle, chances are it's been off road, there could be all kinds of contamination in there. But you know what, Jody, pull the wheels, you can get a pretty good visual inspection on a Dodge with a setup like that. Have somebody hit the pedal and you can see if that caliper is traveling. And don't forget the age old test. If you crack the bleeder and the rotor spins, then you've got a hose issue. If you crack the bleeder and it doesn't spin, then you've got a caliper issue. So those are you know just checks you can do in your driveway. I'll tell you what, our Silverado was a beast after that conversion. Yeah, you got to drive it. Yeah, I can't wait to drive it. Hey, if you want to check out more about Tech Garage, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Like always, thanks for watching Tech Garage, where we get you back on the road. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.